So all that you need to know about Terra Luna revival plan. First, what happened in the past? Let's begin with a bit of background here. Terra is a network. Terra Luna is one token and Terra USD is another. It was called UST. It was a stable coin. It slipped below its one is to one peg to the dollar. Roiling cryptocurrency markets already under pressure alongside tumbling stock markets. It traded as low as 0.16 dollar to the US dollar. And I'm being generous here. Cryptocurrency exchanges delisted this token amid its crash. But what is their revival plan? How is it coming back to action? The plan is called Terra Luna Hard Fork. Now what's Hard Fork? Well, Hard Fork is related to blockchain technology when a radical change is brought to a network's protocol, making previous one valid blocks and transactions invalid or vice versa. Terra will effectively create a new chain without the algorithmic stablecoin. The old chain will be called Terra Classic. Token will be LUNC, L-U-N-C, and then there'll be new chain that'll be called Terra and token would be Luna. Now, how will these be redistributed? Remember, Terra Luna coins are linked. When we say Terra, we mean USD, which is their stable coin pegged to dollar. Now, users had to buy some Terra and then exchange it instead of Luna, for which they would earn small profits. With both coins crashing after the supply-demand ratio broke, Terra is opting redistribution. I mean, what's the option that they've got? Now, they are starting it from the scratch. Luna tokens are restricted to 1 billion. To summarize token distribution, here are the details. 30% goes to the community pool. 35% go to the pre-attack Luna holders. 10% to pre-attack USD holders. 10% to post-attack Luna holders. And then 15% to post-attack USD holders. I'm reiterating here, USD and Luna are interlinked and both had crashed. But this pre-attack, post-attack categorization, and also keep this in mind, they're calling it an attack. Uh, they're not calling it a crash because as for them, this, this is some attack which actually led to the crash. So they're calling it pre-attack and post-attack. That's the categorization. But what does the categorization mean? Pre-attack means snapshot to be taken uh, at, at a certain block. They have mentioned the date here, which is 7th of May. For post-attack, it is 27th of May. But what is a snapshot, you ask? A snapshot means a recording of the state of a blockchain at a specific point in time. Now, this is my explainer, but of course, uh, our experts will also decode the good and bad of it. And as I said, we'll also talk about if this revival plan is good at all. For that, we have uh, two guests. Ajit Kurana, founder of Flexical, Chara Chandra, VP Research and Strategy, Earth ID. A very warm welcome to both of you. Um, Mr. Kurana, I want to begin with you. Explain this categorization. You know, 10% goes to this, and then even if you fall into that category, a part of it would actually come to you first. There's a lot of, I mean, there's, there are several tables on the website. Can you just break it down for us? What is this categorization? So when there is a revival plan and there's a new token being introduced for the revival plan, Luna or Terra's uh, attempt should be to be as fair in giving the benefits to people who have made a loss. For this, it needs to know who has made how much loss, which means who held how many tokens. This is impossible because every second, tens of thousands of transactions are taking place. So what they did was that instead of saying, when the price started falling or the token got depegged from the dollar, we will find who held the tokens and distributed in that proportion because people may have panicked, sold, or tried to speculatively buy. They've come up with different snapshots based on their understanding of how these tokens moved. And they will divide the new token in certain proportions, which you have just shown on screen, to people who held the Luna token or the Terra token before the crash occurred or after the crash occurred. Right, but then there's also going to be that gap here. You know, that duration where the crash was happening. What about that? Correct. So this is why it is impossible, as in it's literally impossible to figure out who should be compensated. For example, people who continue to hold the UST or the old Luna for the longest time, they will be able to get it in all of the categories. What about people who speculatively bought it when the price crashed? They will needlessly be given a compensation when they've already made a profit because of the speculative crash. So it is impossible and you are right that uh, there will be people who will say that I lost money then and I lost money now. And there'll be people who gained money then because they speculatively bought it at a very low price and they gained money now. 
Mr. Chandra, isn't it a very complex plan? I mean, uh, how does one know which category one falls into and then how will I, I get the airdrop? How will I really receive those talk tokens? Right. And as Ajit pointed out, uh, there are no clear answers there, right? And since it's very difficult to determine uh, who should be compensated in which order, depending upon what, at, at what point in time you made those trades and lost money. Hmm. So I think it's a pretty uh, complex process. And even uh, I sincerely do not believe that just doing a hard fork bills will let them sail through this crisis, right? Because uh, Terra as an ecosystem, they have they have uh, suffered a massive trust breach, right? So community uh, members are will still see this uh, with an iota of suspicion and look at their plans uh, very, very, uh, I would say, with, with minute detail. Sure, but Mr. Kurana, I was read, also reading some reports where they said, I mean, there's just positive sentiment about this new blockchain as well because they're back, it's a revival, and, uh, you know, they have... Uh, all these strategies also in place and it was popular before uh, as well and now this time they're saying we are not going to go with the stable coin we're not gonna uh, you know do the algorithmic way so what about that then so see the thing is that everybody is sympathetic to the people who have made a loss for literally no fault of their own this is not a market crash or True. a misevaluation of a token it was really bad programming on the part of the stablecoin creators sure. so because of that sympathy people are not airing the negative sentiment for example one negative point could be hey what has changed in luna you are creating a new token but it is exactly the copy of that so i had a glass of water in my hand the glass smashed because it was a flimsy glass but now you are giving me another copy of the same glass. You are not telling me why it won't crash and what trick they are playing. But then they are saying we are not uh, we are not algorithmic anyway. Oh no no that's what I'm saying. That's the trick they are playing. See, suppose there were no UST that is a stable coin earlier and there mm. was just Luna and Luna had fallen to whatever eighty five percent or ninety nine percent. People would attribute it to market forces because the peg was broken. We know that the algorithm was wrong. Now what they have done is that they have removed the peg. Luna's biggest biggest purpose was to be a governance token to the UST. Now there is no UST. They have forgotten to tell us what is the main purpose of Luna anymore. Hmm. So this is where I do not like what is happening. Oh, uh, and what are the flaws uh, you find in this uh, new plan, Mr. Chandra? I think they also have to come clean on what is the consensus they are following this time. Are they still following the delegated proof of stake, which led to halting of the network? Right, so they need to come clean on that, and as Ajit pointed out, right, just uh, just forking uh, this uh, this new network, right, will not solve much of the problem. So it's also important to highlight that uh, are we retaining the same same code, especially even in the case of uh, this this new 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 chain, right? Just because just just by saying that you're not following the algorithmic model, but when it comes to a collateralized stable coin, right, how are you maintaining the the peg? What are the reserve assets which you will be holding? So they need to also come clean on the reserve assets parts here. Okay, but as you said, there has been a breach of, let's say, trust and faith here amongst the investors. Uh, so they are reviving it. Of course, they're going to give uh, some portion of, of tokens to those who owned it before. Do you think people will, okay, get it and then, you know, make some money out of it if they can and then get out of it and again it will lead to another crash? Is Is... I mean, I've just put it in a very layman way, but do you think that can happen in probably a more complex and technical way, Mr. Chandra? I think uh, that possibility cannot be ruled out. And let, let's also look at what's happening with with, with uh, the founder himself, right? So there's a lot of case, cases which are going on both in uh, Korea as well as US, and uh, there are chances that his assets might be frozen. So such a fate cannot be ruled out. That's what I can say. It's quite possible. Okay, you're talking about Do Kwon here. And yeah. you're saying uh, his, his presence is also questionable there. Uh, just to wrap the conversation here, Mr. Khurana, uh, so let's say if, if someone who had Luna, who had owned it in the past, what would you like to tell them for this revival plan as it comes tomorrow? The thing is that one of the uh, important points to note is that only 10% of this allocation will be given to you tomorrow and the remaining 90% will be given to you monthly over the next 24 months. Yeah. So this way, frankly, even if you want to go and sell the tokens as soon as possible, uh, you will only be able to recover a fraction of your price. And last point on this matter is that, see, the I expect that tomorrow when L, the new Luna token lists, there will be wild fluctuations. Like I wouldn't be surprised if the day is high and the day's low is as much as 10 times apart. 
So hmm. please be careful. Don't try to play the ga- uh, trading game. It will be pure gamble. Okay, thank you so very much, uh, gentlemen, for talking to us for this discussion.